Do you uh, want to stop the recording for a while? And oh, then, yes, thank you. Uh, first, text us a neighbor. That's an amazing show. And that time I came to know uh, me and you both won the award together. Maybe one, you are in watercolor. I was in the same kind of award, the second in acrylic. So that time I came to know about it. I'm following you and your amazing art since then. So I'm so honored uh, to call you here and listen and uh, know about your techniques and everything, how you work, amazing crystal balls and everything. So if I, if I tell about more uh, soon, Warren is working with watercolor and she's marvelous painter about like crystal balls. Yeah, definitely. You, <laughs> it's so good. If you see her work, you will be amazed. Oh. <laughs> so thank you so much, Soon. Uh, no. Accept this uh, proposal and sharing your technique and uh, your secrets or maybe some tips with our beautiful, amazing group. I'm sure everybody will enjoy it. <laughs> so yeah, here is yours now. Thank, thank you. I. <laughs> I am so sorry, everybody. It's not uh, uh, there for because I I, I thought you guys were from Texas because I live in Texas. Oh, seven o'clock. Oh, I have about an hour. I think it's, I have enough time. I just gonna get ready or something, something. And somebody called and uh, I thought, oh, I think it's, I'm gonna answer. So I answered and it's like, are you coming into the Zoom meeting? I said, oh, I have. Already, I'm getting ready. So like, I'll be there about six thirty. And they said, they're in Maryland. I'm like. Are you married? You know, somebody asked me about some meet. That's why I was so confused. Like it was a Zoom meeting, and I'm like, I thought I supposed to. Get, I thought I supposed to drive to that man's fair, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that must be not. So actually, I got very confused, and uh, uh, of course, it's until now I still confused. But now I'm okay because now I knew that uh, it was the uh, same group that I was thinking about. It was. I thought I'm getting old, okay? It's just kind of, not just getting old, but it's like, I just get so, just kind of doing nothing. It's just making me more lazy. Okay. Um, so hi, everybody. I'm Soon Warren. Uh, I have a drawing because uh, um, when you guys are thinking about, you know, I paint a lot of crystal and flower of crystal. I paint everything. I want to paint everything in this whole wide world. Something I like, I will paint because I don't discriminate. I paint everything. But uh, um, I think it's just kind of last of the time I paint crystal. I think in the beginning, I started painting crystal because I like to um, kind of have a challenge in my patience, I think. So I think I tried, but see, even now, you know, I don't, can I realize I do have some patience, but it's not that much. I don't have like a lot of patience, like some of the artists that I recognize, I know. So what I do is actually kind of when I do crystal, I don't paint very tight, 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 because I am not a tight person. So I just go all over the place and I just kind of, kind of put my foot down. And I am going to be sit there and I reorganize my craziness. And a lot of time people think it's like, I am very tight. I'm like, hmm, maybe I am tight. It look like tight, but it's my process is actually it's not that tight. So I think you are going to just kind of have a little bit of a uh, sense that you are going to fear that. So I don't know, hour and a half, hour, hour and a half. I don't know how much I can actually relate it to you, but I will try, okay? so. If you look at this one, I have a drawing. I just made it, this one like a little crazy because uh, I was going to make this one step by step. So I want to give kind of good drawing so I can take picture and I can just kind of start with a uh, step by step. So I just went a little bit overboard. But this is kind of drawing. I think it's watercolor. If you, I think it's just kind of acrylic or oil painting. You don't have to be too crazy drawing because it's kind of, you have some kind of uh, that structure. You can actually make things kind of very easily uh, uh, 
kind of put on your uh, detail. But watercolor, lots of the time we are very confused because um, kind of we think it's just kind of it's hard because of the only one thing we think is just hard because we think we lose white and that's it, which is kind of a true. But there's a way to save our white because I don't want white white anyway. So what I do is, so it's kind of watercolor in order to have a structured painting for the, my detail painting, I spend a lot of time actually put my drawing perfectly down. And usually that's my composition. Color might be changing. Sometimes it's just kind of things change it, but kind of very kind of main structure of the painting, I usually put it pretty tightly. And I spend, you know, these days if we use digital projector or something, even digital projector for me, it's not good enough. I have to go back. I have to figure it out what the structure exactly stands in my painting because uh, that's when actually first time in my art kind of process, I get very uh, close relationship with my subject matter. So then if I understand that my subject matter that when I'm painting, I can be much freer than not knowing. Because if I don't know, I, kinda, I kind of start to hesitating myself, what should I do? Where, where, where do I go? What, what, what? But if, if I know exactly where I'm going, I know I can just kind of be free and I know it's gonna be okay. So first thing that I wanted to do is, I think it's a lot of, a lot of people know, usually um, kind of people ask me about how I, um, stretch my paper. I usually stretch my paper doing this regular 3M masking tape. You can actually get this one at Walmart or Home Depot or Lowe's. You know, you can buy this one. I usually like, I think this is a two inches. Can you see? And what I'm doing is I'm making this one double tape. So essentially I'm making both sides tight. So one third goes in, one third push it down, one third goes in, one third push it down like this. And after that, I press this one exactly on the edges. Can you see? And left over, I will just, instead of just cutting it off. Soon the camera actually is cut off. We can't actually see what you're doing. Okay, let me see. Okay, live transcription closed caption. No, the, it's working. You just need to pull it down a little. Okay, just like the, it. Yeah, there you go. Now we can see. Oh, okay, it. I see. I see. I see. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, so what I do is I put it down. Can you see? I will do this one all the way around. You can I did this one one side. Then what I what I will do is I will put this one. Pretend I did everywhere. Okay. Because I don't want to spend time too much on it. And I press this one down completely like this. Then this area, as at this part, I didn't put the uh, tape on it, but this part, I put tape on it. It's a... Um, I, uh, I cannot use kind of manual somehow. So it's kind of, when I put my hands up, it kind of uh, wiggles, it's kind of, all right. So this part, actually, you can see it very tight. You cannot lift these things up. So this way, water doesn't go in or something is kind of, it's pretty good. So after this point, what I will do is, I will risk it. And this days, Talk about what kind of a frisket I do. Because a frisket, kind of for the crystal painting, applying frisket is actually kind of important. If you do a good job, finalizing it much easier. But if you do offer job, you have to work a little harder, spend a little more time to make things work when you are finalizing your painting. Okay. So usually I try to put my frisket really kind of nice way. In this case, I use this one. If you look at this, this one is kind of fine line. 
I think this is what you call it. This is a fine line. I think it's a, I don't buy this one, blue one. If you go to more, uh, you know, I know, our store, you can buy blue one, but usually I don't use blue, but I buy this kind of uh, bottle separately. And I, I use um, Winsor and Newton to Winsor kind of fill it up. And so I just kind of use a little bit and then I use it. Okay. And lots of time people don't like uh, to use this one because it clog up this uh, needle part. But there's a solution because I, did, I didn't use it before, but I, I figured it out. I can uh, unclog this one. If you have, I think everybody has a Gugon, G O O G O N E. And everybody knows Gugon. Hold on. Oops. Hold on. <laughs> I was going to get ready and I was late. Can you see this one, glue gun? Here, can you see? And you just kind of put this one on, on um, take it apart and usually plug up part is the this needle part. And you drop a couple of uh, drop and sit there for kind of 20, 30 minutes. And you use the needle and it'll just kind of flush out everything and you can clean out this one very easily. And after that, since I figured this, this one out, I've been using actually this needle much more than before because I don't have to worry about this one clogging up. So, so what I do is I will use my reference photo. I usually have kind of reference photo closely and where the lighter area, where I wanted to save light, I will draw the line. It doesn't have to be perfect. I will just kind of have a, this is the time that I do this a lot. I try to not go exactly because I just kind of have my own way of kind of doodling it. Can you see? And this one, and I see something here. Because I'm not a good, Kind of precise person. Everybody thinks I am precise, but it's I am not because uh, kind of when you see finer product, you think it's I be precise because uh, I don't have to tell you I was wrong. So that's why it looks I did is kind of perfect, but it's not usually. Okay, so I will have this one. So if I when I go to workshop, I usually have this pretty pair and. I usually kind of give them to prepare for the, this uh, this process, which is until it's kind of um, it's masking part. Because masking part, it's just nothing. There's a drawing and when you see that light and you just have to apply it kind of and dry. So for me, this one is kind of tedious and no result. And eventually this one is going to be taking it off and give, give me a white line. But without this white line, crystal, you know, I just kind of don't want it to leave this area just white. I just wanted to have this white line and later I can actually give some lighter color around. soon uh, yeah to interrupt can i uh, audience have some question few questions yes. while you are masking can we do that do you mind few question audience have mm -hmm. yeah so the first is like uh, do you always use the photograph mm -hmm. do you always use the photograph to make your artwork oh yes okay because um when i when i paint if I don't have a, a reference, I cannot paint because um, if I don't have a reference, I will have kind of I will make a cartoon character because I cannot go detail. I will make something out of it, but it's, I cannot go detail detail. And usually, I prepare my own reference 
kind of this one uh, is a tulip that when I had this one, I took a picture with kind of, so I set it up and I took a picture. So, and I think it's the next one is what I do is kind of, I have another one and this one too. Um, I just kind of set it up and I, I take a picture and it doesn't mean, I think it's kind of, it's kind of, if I just kind of put this one in a front and if I paint this one in a detailed painting, I cannot do it because not only it's not only that you know my eyes kind of change it all the time, and flowers will will dead and the light it will change because I usually use um, natural light and just kind of very kind of little lighter kind of little kind of uh, delicate light and I cannot use sunlight and I think if I use a set of light, it's not going to give me uh, that great bright light that I like to have. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so kind of usually I take a picture and, you know, I just kind of choose something that if I, if I have something I like. So I usually have my reference photo go with it. Without it, I would just paint or painting. Just, uh, that's not true. But even if I go to wall painting, I will do it. But it's like especially watercolor. I want to know where I'm going. I can be free, but it's not that free. I think that's, I don't know if that makes sense to you. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. No, certainly. So another question we have that what do you use uh, for drawing? Like, mm -hmm. you, like, what do you use for drawing? Like pencil? Okay. Any? Okay, I wanted to talk about the church drawing. This one, okay, I already talked about, do you remember olden days we had a, what they call OPEC projector? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to do is OPEC projector, but don't buy OPEC project. I saw some of those, um, uh, some of those, uh, what do you call, like a art, art supply store were selling the OPEC projector. They kind of was kind of expensive. I think olden day, that was kind of top notch maybe. It was kind of good one. But OPEC projector is kind of uh, obsolete. And you see, it's no longer, we, we don't need it anymore. And these days, what we call is digital projector. Have you, have you heard about digital projector? Digital projectors are in these days because digital projectors are almost like, if you use a projector for the, the do you remember the, when you go to office, can I uh, have, I will show you, can I will bring my the digital projector? I have a very little one and that's one I can travel with it. It's very good. And um, I talked about this one uh, at the Mission Texas. And there, if you uh, Google um, digital projector, Best Buy, even Walmart has it. Uh, you know, pe because the people watch that YouTube with a kind of connected to phone or computer, or whatever, and they can actually project onto the wall and they can actually watch movie or, you know, video or YouTube, everything. So what kind of what we are doing is if we have an image, we can actually project that one into the wall. Can you see? Then you can actually trace where the proportion is. And the digital projector is so good. It doesn't mean that you can paint, kind of digital projector is gonna make you paint like a, a how, how, however you want to. But the digital projector will give you a clear drawing proportion. I think it's what it is. Kind of what you need is kind of, for me, it's kind of most helpful, helpful um, a thing is proportion of the, uh, you know, that, you know, painting. So when I have this one, it doesn't kind of, I made it this one, it's kind of didn't have this one, but it's like, I made it this one a lot. So I think just like I, uh, I say before, okay, I wanted to talk about this one because it's not that easy. I have a drawing here, something. And so when you have it, this one, I didn't touch it. So when I look at it, I don't know what's going on. I trace it, but it's, I don't know what's going on. So I have to go back with my reference photo and I have to redraw to make sure I understood my drawing is, what the, my drawing is. But a lot better, I think this is kind of, I spent probably 
much less time. Okay, if I draw, draw this one with kind of grid, probably sometime day, kind of a, a maybe 10 day, 10 hour, maybe even just kind of eight hour for uh, kind, of, kind of that hours to actually draw. And my painting, because that's how I want it. And now because of the uh, digital projector, I save whole lot. I think it's just kind of, I only have to spend maybe two hours instead of 10 hours or 12 hours. I can, I only have to spend about maybe two hours for the preparing drawing. And for me, I am not that young, okay? I don't want to draw, draw, draw. I wanted to spend time, rest of my life, painting instead of drawing. So for me, that is like that sense. So if you want to, can I will show you what it looks like? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have one more question. That's from me, my side. Like, what kind of paper do you use? It's like uh, how much pound or cold press or hot press. Like, what kind of paper? Oh, he was here. Okay, hold on, hold on. sorry. No worries. Okay. Take your time. Here is the digital projector. Oh, wow, that's so tiny. Can you see how small this one is? Yeah. How about soon? It would be this so one. Tiny. If you can open up the link, can uh -huh. you share the link with us? Huh? Can you I will... share the link? Okay. You have cell phone? Yeah. Hi, Google it. Digital projector, okay? Oh, okay. Then, ta -da! like some of them are like $60, $80, or, but if you are using it at home, you don't have to have this one. This one, I can have, I can travel with it. You see? Oh, wow. This, this one, cool. I can. And you see, it's kind of this one, it's very little. And I found, I saw some of them much smaller than this one, smaller than cell phone, I saw. But, it's up to you, but it's a, this one is a Brookstone. I, I bought this one, Brookstone. It was on sale before, but I like Kodak. They have, now they have in Kodak and I think it's a Sony. And I think it's, a, and I think it's another one is, it's an HP. Yeah, Kodak is like $180. So what is this company you are talking about? It's Brookstone, right? Yeah. Brookstone, I'm not sure they still have. Actually, this one was two fifty. Okay. And I think it's so one time with uh, uh, my friends and I. You know, you buy one, and second one is a half off. So we just kind of paired up and we bought this one, just kind of like that. So Brooks, some. But what I'm giving you this one is this one. You have. Can you see this line? This one. You just mm -hmm. kind of plug into your computer and your screen, whatever that is. You took a picture, beautiful flower, and you put that picture is in your screen. When you plug in, it will shoot out. Can you see? That's how it goes. And it's, you know, it's just when you're painting, detail painting, un unless you just kind of greet, chances are most of them use this one this day. No kind of opaque projector. Before, people use opaque projector, but nowadays, no longer. I, I lend somebody else, and I don't know where that goes. Because at this stage, this one is much better because the opaque protector is you just have to kind of make your room darker, dark room. And when you go kind of size, what do you call like a, a 22 by 30, it's just kind of round. It's just kind of that, it's just what do you call, it just kind of, it, it distorts the uh, shape. But this one, nada, it's just everything is so good. It's sometimes like, this is just too good, right? But if you know it's kind of if you don't use it, you know, so you just kind of hand drawn, that's fine. Can you see? But I wanted to, I like to paint detail and I like to, uh, you know, my uh, final product is actually just kind of a more close to what I want. And that projector helps me, saves me drawing time big deal. It's kind of you know, almost like two day, one, one day. So this is my. Another thing I wanted to show is, so I use this one sometimes, this needle one. It doesn't mean that I use this one all the time. Because sometimes I use a different one. Okay. When I use that one, I use the in...
Okay. This case, I like to use this one in the um, water bottle. What I do is I put this water bottle, can you see this water bottle leaf? I just kind of stick this one into the center of a styrofoam. If I don't do that because this one is so little, sometimes it flips over, then I just kind of uh, lose uh, most of it. And I know that I have my new bottle, but I cannot find it. I know that I have a tons of the brush, but it's I can you know when I need it, I cannot find it. Oh, so another thing is, when I draw, I always use mechanical pencil, you see? Because <coughs> this mechanical pencil is thin and always exact <coughs> kind of uh, line. And it doesn't get thicker and you know, you don't have to constantly, <coughs> constantly what you call kind of sharpening it. And so a lot easier. <coughs> and another one, I cannot find my frisket right now. So just can I use it? Almost done. <coughs> 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 I have this, this one is just a regular brush. Kind of, I think so if you check your own um, brush holder, probably you can find, can you, can you see this one? It's a little slanted end of the brush, other side of the brush, it has a little slanted. Can you see? I think I can get closer. Yeah, we can see it. We can, you see can you see? It. Okay. Yeah. So I use this one. And actually, when I use this bobber, sometimes it bubbles up. Short line, it's just kind of blop, blop, blop. And sometimes it's kind of a little bit of a uh, problem. But if I just kind of uh, try to rush on it, I will use. But most of the time, I am serious about something, I will use this. So instead of masking fluid, you are using go, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of masking fluid, you are using go for. Uh, no, 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 no. This is masking fluid. Okay, this is never not ever use goo gun. Goo gun is to clean up your needle. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. See it? And this one clocks up. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. This way, when I save this all my white light, light doesn't mean only white. Light mean if I have a very, kind of I have a lots of a darker color and it's kind of there's a, some kind of lighter, uh, very sharp line or something I have to paint around it. It's kind of hard to paint around it. That's what I will save it. If I have this one, this yellow is kind of, uh, if you look at this, yellow is kind of whole a lot. Not only that. 
But I will not save this kind of, I will not paint this one around it. But I think it's if I have, okay, I will talk about that one a little later. I will not, if I have a big, larger area of a uh, uh, lighter area, I will not frisket it because I rather paint around it because that's easier and that's faster. You see? But this one, because I wanted to introduce a lot of different color between this line and I am making this one. Oh, yes, I made this one. So I have to go this one all the way. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of giving you the sample what I do to prepare. <clears throat> So I think it's kind of understanding why I do what I do. If you understand that, it's kind of, it's very simple. So I will show this one close up what it looked like, okay? Oh, the line. Can you, can you see that dark line? Okay, I think I know. Yes, we can see the dark line. That's uh -huh. okay. We can see this the dark line, line is kind of, Okay, hold on. Okay, now you're not going to see the still dark line. Yeah, that's okay. When you close it up, you know. Okay. I think that is fine. That's okay. <clears throat> it's kind yeah. of louder because of, I have the camera on top, the line. I think that's what it's kind of showing. So if you look at this one, can you see the where the yellow is? It's kind of that uh, um, the yellow I applied it. <clears throat> I wanted to. So I'm going to put this one aside because I have to work on this frisket and it's going to be takes a little while. So here, I frisket this one and I've been painting this. And you see this uh, baby spread and it's kind of a whole bunch of it. It's kind of big. Actually, it's very small uh, bowl, but it's like has a lots of uh, <clears throat> Uh, what do you call it? Kind of that reflection going on, it's a reflected light going on. And I lost my so if you look at this one, I think this is kind of a good thing to talk about. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the um confusing. So if you look at this one, this this is my photo. And this is, I printed out from the, my uh, computer because I wanted to paint this one and I couldn't find my photo. So I've been digging out all over the place. I couldn't find it. So I printed out from my uh, computer. And you see the difference? This is a little darker underneath and everything. And this is a little lighter. So when you look at the, uh, your reference, reference is going to be always changing. It's never, ever it's going to be the same thing. You, if you print out from the Walmart or Walgreens or Costco, they are going to be different. Even colors are different because of their, uh, you know, depends on what they are doing, chemical, uh, chemical and color or something they're changed, kind of they are different. So I never, uh, you know, I never kind of uh, slave to what color that I have. You know, I just kind of apply it. And if something happened, I will just go on from there. But it's the only one thing that I will do is I will try to go, when I have a frisket on it, I will try to push it as much as possible. So I don't have to kind of paint this one later, kind of worry about if that's going to be work or not. So, <clears throat> so this was kind of a good example. This one is darker and this is lighter. This is just my reference. And you see, and after that, can I, I have this one or not, and kind of it doesn't matter. So. I've been working on this one. 
And you see, I've been applying this one color kind of a couple of days, maybe more. And another thing is when you're painting watercolor, it is very important to kind of dry between layers. And I think that if you can actually, uh, you, it doesn't mean that you cannot paint uh, without drying it, you can. But what I, uh, what happened is when, you, then when colors are not dry and it's when you apply it, the color doesn't layers. Can you see? This area have a lots of uh, uh, yellow and red and all sorts of this different color. But if you look at this area, yellow is all over. Red is kind of a bit of kind of red is kind of all over, and there's a, some kind of green comes in. So all the colors are kind of a mingles together, very uh, kind of comfortably, just kind of supports each other. But if you apply this one, yellow here and red here and blue here or green, they push each other. They might mix some, but they push each, each other. So what happened was instead of just kind of just kind of calming whole area down, you are actually seeing what's underneath the color. And you see, you are not layering it like this. You are actually seeing like this. So color, kind of what I see is kind of, that way your colors are kind of, what I uh, noticed was when I do that, colors can be a little shallow. I like deep, rich kind of a color, but I, it doesn't mean, you know, it's like, a. a I think this is when I apply color, kind of uh, thin layer, just kind of mingling at once. Color, color is kind of a little darker, but it's, I don't see the depth. I see color, but it's not the depth. But I wanted to see the color of the depth. It's kind of, that's what makes kind of, it just kind of push it down. I think that's what I, that's what I uh, kind of feel it. So when I have this one, if you look at this one, okay, I will push this one. Thank goodness. Thank goodness I'm wearing a pants because I see this one here. So when I look at this one here, you see it's much lighter. I like actually darker better. So if I I am still working on this because I did it this one and I thought I'm not gonna do it anymore because I wanted to show you this one here. And you see, I have this yellow. And a permanent yellow light. Yellow is good one. Because so I've been um, layering this one many times already. It doesn't mean that I layer every place of all at once. I did this area, okay, I feel like I wanted to do some yellow and this I would go yellow. And sometimes I just let it dry. I will just kind of find the some of the area yellow. Can you see? I am free to apply color. In the beginning, that's what I did. And at uh, some point, if, you, if I look at some of the area a little bit darker, orangish, yellowish or something, then I will go, if I want to go a little orangish, We just kind of go red, permanent rose, the permanent rose. Can you uh, can you share about your brush? Your brush is very interesting. Which kind of brush you're using? Oh, uh, this brush. Yeah. This one is. Oh, this one. I. Uh, this one is the name is all gone. Um, silver black. I use so much. It's all the names are gone. The things are all gone. Wow. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Okay, uh, I need to find a, a little bit newer one. Yes, yeah, so this is like a silver black velvet. 
This one is not uh, clean skin nor uh, red saber, but this one is kind of uh, what I heard is uh, the score, you know, that bush tear uh, red, the bush score, score, okay. You know, they look red with the kind of lots of tear. And I think this is what I heard, a kind of mixture of that hair and uh, uh, synthetic. And this brush is kind of, it's very reasonable with the price. And actually this one is, the quality is as good as Red Saber and Klinsky. And price is actually as good. As, you know, I, I love the price. So. And uh, would you like to share about your watercolor? Like what kind of brand you are using? We are so interested. Which one? The watercolor, like the paint. Okay, watercolor paint. Okay. Watercolor paint. I am not using just kind of one, one kind thing. So if you look at this, my organization, Everybody just kind of laugh. This is my organization here of the my watercolor. Okay, and this is how I travel with, and it, this is how I use it at home. <laughs> this one is what happened was this one I you know sometimes when I use color, sometimes I like some of the color, but it's a um. This is the guy, actually, I love his color. This one is, he is Michael Wilcox. I think it's maybe some of the people who are interested in color, they know. Michael Wilcox, he is the uh, kind of, he makes a kind of, he um, have a publication, I think it's every two, uh, two year or three year, I'm not sure these days. And he makes a, a independent, uh, rating of the every company of the watercolor. And I think they ask them for the um, submission for the, their color. And he tested independently and it's, he put him in the, uh, that book. And uh, he must be good. He's, he's kind of, I know the yellows. Yellows are all good, okay? So kind of they usually carry them, kind of okay. So this one is Michael Wilcox. I, I haven't used it. You know, I have this one. I had this one for almost like 15 years and I still use it because I didn't use it. It kind of put it aside and I thought, oh, I think I'm going to use it. So I'm using. But yellow, I like this company. Permanent Yellow Deep. This one, oh, it's the same thing. Permanent Yellow Deep. And another one is permanent yellow light. And so I use the permanent yellow light. So I think that's why I've been using this one. This one is permanent yellow light of the company. And this one is deep. And this one, so can I, I don't use one kind of, uh, one kind of, uh, one company thing. I can, I, when I, when, when I use some of the things that some company I like, then I will use it. And so can you see this one is deep and this is, and for the yellow, I know that I will buy this one again, because I didn't buy this one. Actually, I got it as a kind of award or something, and it's really good. And that this is a mission gold, permanent yellow and third kind of permanent yellow light. <clears throat> and this one is a exactly same thing as cadmium yellow. And this one is cadmium yellow light. So can you see, can I can mix this one? So if I, I like cadmium yellow light or cadmium yellow medium, cadmium yellow. <coughs> so if I have that one, I will use that too. I think it's kind of very similar. But <coughs> how it works, I like this one better. And usually, <coughs> most of them I have is Windsor and Newton. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sometimes, some people who are buying kind of a new, kind of they're kind of beginning of the class, the beginning of the watercolor, and they don't know what to buy. And I usually tell them, if you don't know which one is better or not, his best bet is to buy Windsor and Newton. 
And it's usually, they're usually always good. So kind of insulin Newton, I have a lot of insulin Newton, like a, a purple, I, you always use this one, dioxygen, mineral violet. And it's kind of some special color that I use. And I like Stephen Step and Quiller color. Every one of them. Kind of, he doesn't have much color, but I like every one of them. Step and Quiller. He he has a kind of good color. I like his. And uh, and that I have. And it's another thing that I like. Kind of I buy especially kind of separately is turquoise. This one is turquoise green from Snanier. And this one I buy from them, kind of Snanier. And I think sometimes I got a lot of free stuff. I use sometimes, if I like it, I might use it. But if I, but I'm not buying it again, but, uh, uh, but usually I buy again is Snanier, this one, and uh, um, lots of kind of, kind of, that red permanent allergen and crimson, I always buy Winsor and Newton in this one. So I have lots of Winsor and Newton, and I think it's just kind of sepia, indigo, the color that I like. Winsor and Newton is kind of usually pretty good fat, like Christian blue. I think Christian blue is usually everything is okay. So it's kind of a hard to say because sometimes I have lots of different color, different company, and they are usually good. But it's the only one thing if you don't buy like an academy, like a, a, a Brambacher Academy, that's a student grade. So there's a lot of fillers in it. So you don't want to buy that one. And uh, uh, I think it's kind of a lot of time people get confused with the Winsor and Newton with the Cotman. The Cotman is not kind of professional quality. Cotman is actually student grade. So they are not actually good quality. So you don't, you want to avoid to uh, buy, it's kind of buying that Cotman. It's kind of Winsor & Newton, it's kind of a good quality one, kind of professional one. But I think most of the yellows are good because I have a lots of yellow, just kind of, I kind of skitter around. So I thought, oh, I better just clean out my uh, boxes. So I just kind of had a lots of yellow in my box because I can finish off this one. So I have lots of them in my box, but you know, that's why I have so much yellow in my box, but it's all different company. This one is cadmium yellow from M. Graham. I think it was pretty good too. All the yellow, kind of so far that I use yellow, they're all good. Yellows are actually usually, I don't know what the ingredient is, yellows are always good. And they are usually opaque. And uh, um, I think this is kind of when you say, I think somebody has a, uh, what do you call, a transparent watercolor. They are not transparent, transparent, but they're very close to transparent. I noticed that. So we kind of test it. So um, uh, kind of, I don't know if you wanted to know an uh, easier way to uh, test your uh, transparent or not. But I can see if you have that one, it's after class, maybe it's just after this demonstration, I can kind of talk about it. And now I just wanted to show. So, Stephen Kudler. I have, so I have lots of kind of different things. So, I just kind of don't say one company. I think if you say one company, that'll be okay. But can I do, when you guys paint, when I paint, sometimes, I get a kind of a award for some kind of a company, like I don't even know. And sometimes they're good, sometimes like, well, okay, it's just like that. And I see if I like it and it's I will use it, I might not buy it again, but I will use it. So that's what I do. So I have a lot of uh, Mission Gold and uh, uh, Minster and Newton. And I think that's a more dominant thing that I have. So got you see, do you get that answer? <laughs> But you see, if you have in, if you yeah, have, yes, yeah, sure. yeah, sure. yeah, if you Thank don't you. know uh, which one to get it, you know, best bet is uh, I'll get a insert in it. They're usually okay. There you go. So, you know, professional qualities are always kind of, they're usually kind of pretty good. So, all right. So, I'm going to layer again because I wanted to put this layer as much as I can before I take this frisket off because this frisket is gonna be, because this is the time that I have a freedom. 
after frisket is off, I have to, uh, you know, kind of think about saving my red, kind of my, my light. So mm. I'm going to use some red. I lost some. So I'm using red. Can you see? But I'm not applying thick. So even I am applying this red, I you see can I see the red, but it's most of them. Okay. I'm using red, but it's, I can see what's underneath kind of coming through it. But if I apply this one so thick, I am covering up and it's gonna that's the uh, thing that I didn't I didn't want to cover underneath the color. I want underneath color to <clears throat> come through it together. So So if you look at this one, can you see I apply lots of free skate on the bowl. But in my uh, babe spread, I didn't apply any frisket. Oh, actually I applied kind of edges, a little bit uh, frisket, but I didn't apply frisket on my uh, baby spread because there's a, so much white, I'd rather paint around it, kind of paint this kind of flower. If I frisket it, it's just kind of more work and it's kind of more, I think it's, it's not gonna be pretty, so. Because, after I take the frisket off, it doesn't mean that everything's going to be done. I have, that's my, I think it's after frisket is off, that's the kind of actual work starts to make my glass work. Because right now, I am just kind of, what I'm doing is, right now, is I'm applying some of the color in the behind, this kind of reflection, I'm just kind of putting together in the glass. Because if you look at this, some of the kind of transition, I cannot make the transition within this kind of a, uh, this little corner. So kind of transition going on here is red to just kind of a little bit yellow or something, kind of yellow glowness. I cannot do this one little by little. So I frisk get this one and I am just going applying it all over the place to make the transition smoothly. It's almost like a background. You are creating your background. And you see, it's kind of when you have a background, you don't want the background to be just kind of jumpy because you have some object in front of it, standing in front of it. You want it to have that background continually just kind of go on. <clears throat> So now can I ha actually have a lot more color to it. <clears throat> but after, um, usually after frisk is off, I'm going to be like, oh, geez. It is kind of very disappointing, kind of a, there's going to be uh, so much white. Okay. And this one, I think so I'm going to, maybe I'm going to be okay. So I think this is, now actually I kind of like the uh, darkness of the glass. And you see, if you look at this one here, even little marble, I have just kind of here. So I have one marble right here. Even marble underneath, I have yellow. And I actually applied this is kind of scholar like I apply scholar like on top. Can you see? Even a little marble, it looks like yellow, kind of orangish. But even this one, I layer. And I think it's after that, I can actually layer a little more to make darker. Maybe I apply too much red. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow.
And sometimes I like the color, like uh, um, some of them I don't want it to uh, change. I like color like from Winsor and Newton. I think they are the most beautiful color. I'm gonna apply a little more yellow. Usually yellow glows and white sparkles. Little bit of white sparkles, lots of yellow glows. Okay. And I'm gonna wait until this one dries out before I apply <clears throat> any red. And not, even now, can I, I'm gonna work on this kind of this reflection. I apply this kind of um, frisket randomly because if I don't have this frisket, this kind of sparkly looking, it's not gonna happen because every, even if I, I scrub a lot, and if I, if I don't have this one, that sparkle is not there. It's just gonna be a little bit dull, but it's when I, even it's kind of random like this. And it's a, I scrub this one, that kind of uh, sparkle of the, this reflection is gonna be, it works a lot better. That's why I just kind of apply all over the place. So this one, I look at this one here is kind of darker. Oh, and uh, <laughs> my palette. Usually I have, this is extra. I have a yellow palette, red palette, I think this is supposedly blue palette, blue palette, and I have black palette, a black palette. So what happened is, I, it's when I have the yellow, can you see I'm applying this yellow here? Because the yellow, this is lighter yellow, this is darker yellow. Mixing together, it doesn't matter for me. But if I have some kind of other color goes in, Color just kind of jump in together too much. I think it's because I am too controlling that I don't want the color to just kind of uh, mix, mingling it without my um, permission, maybe. So I usually like to have a separate because this one is black, which is I mix with these three colors. I'm gonna have a little bit of crack and blue in it, okay? And this one, fresh and okay, here. So it's kind of blue palette, a little bit messier, but it doesn't matter if it's blue. I'm not looking for a clean blue anyway. All right. Because I'm, I'm going to work on this area. This is too blue. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to actually pick up some of the black from my black palette. Because the black palette, essentially I have indigo and sepia and allergen crimson. So if I put a little bit of blue on it, that's kind of a little bit of a um, dark indigo blue. Looks like indigo blue, this good. This area is gonna be darker. So I already have this one red here. I already have it once. So this area is kind of a little darker. So instead of just kind of trying to make everything at once, I am going to make this one separately. Even shadow, I will apply separate way. And I will blend this one out sharply. And I will blend this area out too. So if you look at this one, I did this one, so I, I don't wanna do this area yet. 
because I want to wait until this area dried up so I can actually pull this area shadow. If, if I do it this one, I can actually do this area a little bit. If I do this one, I have to watch this one not to touch it. Otherwise, they're pulling and push, and I'm going to have a big um, blossom. Have some red. So this one is kind of shadow. So I just wanted to pull this one out. And this one has a darker shadow. So I'm gonna pull this one out. I have a little bit of red underneath. So I can actually, even I go this one, a little bit of darker color, that red is gonna be still there. And you see, I am just kind of developing this one a little bit more by a little bit more by a little bit more. So I am going to wait until this one dries up and then I will actually take the distress get up. Not this part, maybe it's kind of glass part. So I can show you how to uh, work with this one. I don't know how much we have time, but it's, I wanted to show how to work this one out from the, this point, okay? I guess I'm going to use my kind of hair dryer to dry this in a speech. Takes forever to dry. Okay. Right. Anybody has a question? No? Well, yeah, we actually have a couple questions. Yeah. Um, I, actually, so the first question is what kind of black are you using? It's very opaque. This one is. Um, Allegiant Crimson, mixture of Allegiant Crimson and, okay, this is Allegiant Crimson right here. Can you see? Mm -hmm. This is red, Allegiant Crimson and sepia. I think this is a sepia. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. sepia. It very opaque. It's actually uh, sepia is semi-opaque. Allegiant Crimson is actually uh, that one is actually uh, transparent. And another one I use is indigo, which is kind of semi-transparent or you know, a little bit opaque. But I think that there's a little bit of kind of semi-opaque, opaqueness to it is a sepia. But you can actually use this one opaque way because opaque, can I don't use, if you look, okay. If you look at this one, <clears throat> Can you see this one is kind of, I just kind of apply this one as it part. But if I wanted to make this one opaque to it, it's this background, I go this one, one more layer until it's kind of smooth it out. So it's almost kind of opaqueness you are seeing it. But if you look at this one right here, can you see here? If you look at this one, it's not opaque. Can I say this one is looks opaque, but it's not opaque because I layered it, it's kind of thin layer. And lighter area is kind of a, this reddish tone to it, but I layer this one more, kind of a little opaque. So usually I like background opaque because if you think about it, because watercolors are kind of a, a characteristically, a characteristically like a transparent, even opaque yellow or even, cerulean or cerulean blue, even um, kind of a yellow and cerulean, and it's kind of a, a even a cadmium. So, you know, if you use a lot of water, it's kind of transluent, kind of transparent. But if you, if you don't use lots of water, that's kind of become opaque. So, but I think so sometimes when you're painting watercolor, I think it's just kind of, it doesn't have to be exactly that way, but sometimes, 
when you can for me, sometimes when I paint watercolor, cannot even oil painting, I do paint oil, but even I don't like this kind of background to shouting out too much. So if I use um, transparent color, kind of transparent way, can I say I use gray? I think that's okay. But uh, if I use um, even gray or sometimes it's kind of a uh, transparent color, it's kind of even if it's stronger, if I use on my background, usually sometimes it fights with my subject matter. But, but if I just kind of quiet it down my background, it just kind of stays back. And that's what I like. So usually I use a kind of a black. But this one, if I use a little kind of with water, it becomes transparent. Can you see? This is kind of almost like a, a little. Can you see? You can use this one as a transparent. But if I use this one layers of kind of several times, it became opaque. And lots of time, I like that better. Can you see? Because of this one, I can't even see it. some of the kind of paper just kind of a little bit dark and light, dark and light. And I don't like this one being too much dark and light. And I will one more time. And this one became solid black. But when I make this black, I use three color. And sometimes, if I think it's right now, I think I use it at all. But if I wanted to make this one, what do you call it? Like a, a user of my black color, kind of tube of black. I will use that as a, my uh, filler, but I will just kind of jazz it up because I like to jet and I don't like little dull color. If you have an ivory black, they are kind of a little bit dull and little kind of uh, charcoal kind of a look to it. So it doesn't have that power of that just kind of strong black, even if you just kind of apply a whole lot. So I, I think if I have that, uh, the ivory black, I wanted to jazz it up with like a maybe intense kind of indigo and maybe allergen crimson or, you know, so I just kind of add into it to make this one as, as a filler. Okay, so it's kind of add another color. So. so some people, you know, if you paint, just kind of, if you want to use just a, um, like a transparent, transparent, you can actually use this one as, okay, it's kind of a, hold on, That's I'm going to show my demonstration. Soon, we probably need to wrap up soon because it's close to 8.30. We can stay here about nine, okay? <laughs> it's so late. Ah. I want to be uh, conscious of everybody's time and all of the participants' time also. Um, so we can go a couple more minutes with questions. Ah. Have any questions? I know with, there was one question about what kind of paper do are you using? Soon, what kind of paper are you using? Um, Archie's for Winsor and Newton. Because um, I like the layers of the uh, color and I don't like pulling back up. So I like the, this days I think it's the Archie's best. Can is you see the a, difference? Can you see the difference with, hmm? Is this a cold press, right? Or hot press? The paper. Paper, Archie's? Yeah, it's, it's like cold press, right? Yes. Cold press, I never use hot press because of that one is almost like a, a yupo kind of yupo feeling paper. that I have. Correct, yupo. Yeah, cold press, even I don't even mind rough, but hot press is just kind of too slicky. So if you look, can, can you see that this one is, I still have frisket and I this one is kind of uh, all off. And this is the time I don't like this kind of white being just kind of uh, too white. So this is the time I don't, can I, I wanted to cover some of the, uh, this white. 
So that's why I use this one yellow, kind of clean yellow. And I will just kind of cover this one up randomly. Most of them I will get rid of because I am just kind of applying this one randomly. Only kind of, kind of if you, some of the color get into the darker area, it's gonna uh, get another layer, but this lighter white area will uh, cover with uh, some of the yellow and will stay that light. Can you see? This is what I call dipity dip, dipity do. And I will just kind of show this area because we have to wrap up pretty quickly. So, and after that, what I will do is red. So I always play with red, kind of yellow and red and blue, yellow and red and blue, yellow and red and blue. And when, I, when I'm finalizing it, that's when I, maybe I'm, other color might come in. But usually I save the yellow and red and blue, yellow and red and blue. That's a simple and I will not forget. You see? So if I'm applying this one randomly here, but it's kind of used, I still see some of the flickering light. Okay. And now it's a blue. Or you just kind of press and very gently. So now I use the blue. So if you look at, I wish that I can show you. It's kind of a hard to see from the camera. I think see if I can actually show you this one close. Can you see the kind of hard to kind of see the color, but it's a, there's a yellow and can you see the kind of difference between this yellow uh, frisket is still there and not there? Yeah, we can see that. I do that this one and let it dry. And after that, if I need some other color to fill it up, I might do it. But this is the time I will use a smaller brush and I will use my black and I will use thicker line, okay? If I use too much water in my brush, the color is not going to be black. It's going to be gray, light gray. And when you are, uh, have a kind of light gray, your kind of lines are not going to be sharp like I want it because usually they'll kind of blow up like this. So this is the time I will use little. So kind of, if you look at my uh, palette, can you see it? And this might be just kind of a little bit too purplish. Okay, this is better. So I will make this one very thin line. And I have to wait until this one dries out, but I will show you. So this is the time I will get, actually, if you look at this one, kind of until now, I was kind of doing this and this and this, but now I will actually hold my brush like I am holding my pen or pencil, okay? So I will go this one right next to it. So if the uh, lines are a little bit dirty looking, it's kind of a little jig jaggedy or kind of thick, I can correct it at this point any way I want to. So it kind of uh, depends on what kind of a situation it, you know, it might be changed a little bit, but this is usually, Same. The color is kind of just washes out. So. so when you when I kind of introduce this line, lots of the time that's where you know all those kind of the cut line comes in. The cut line, I just kind of doing this one last minute. In the beginning, all those colors were already applied. And if, you know, it doesn't mean that you cannot apply later, but majority of them are applied. 
And I just have to just kind of, I call it tweaking it like uh, my uh, taste, my style. So if you look at this one, some people are finer than mine. Like uh, some people are just kind of rough. But if you keep this format, you are going to have kind of interesting color pattern of the cut crystal instead of just kind of a dark kind of a one kind of a color. This one doesn't have any color, but I want to. So I will do, this is the black kind of that I do finalizing it last time because after this black, I cannot apply color like a freely because this black is a little thicker. So when you apply other color on top, the black is gonna kind of smear all over the place. That means you are going to have big mess. That actually is gonna be a big mess. So because the black is gonna be spread all over. So this is gonna be your, it's in my finer stage. And this is kind of where I do doodles and you know, things that I wanted to make. And sometimes it's kind of some of the area is empty and you know, I don't wanna make black, just darker area. And that's when I just kind of come up with my um, doodle, kind of whatever that I want to. So this is kind of a little still wet. So it's kind of a little kind of puffing. But pretend that I this is all dry. So if I go this one, a little bit of upper part is going to be a little darker. I mean, I will not cover everything because I made it this color. Okay. Soon, I know that people have some other commitments and need to okay. get so <laughs> you could probably wrap it up. All some right. Of us haven't even had dinner coming. yet. So. Oh, so I don't mind, but I just want to show you a little bit more. So. No, I know. And it's uh, unbelievably amazing. And the glistening, uh, it's just unbelievable. There's so many comments that I've seen going through that how beautiful and it's your technique really is amazing. And for somebody who does not do watercolor, I am impressed at just the control that you have and all your little techniques. And I think that's so fun. So I appreciate that. I, I don't know, Haral, do you have anything else you want to no, pipe I'm, in? I'm so anybody, glad. You know, if, it's I'm a, so if glad. some people don't go, like if anybody asks me question that I can stay a little bit longer. So I am so sorry for being late. <laughs> oh, thank, you. thank you so no, much. It we you are amazing. You are so amazing sharing such a technique, and we are so much interested, but the time is running. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's so, no, so thank you. To, thank you. To watch you, how you're doing your work. It's so wonderful. But it's, yeah. It's not, that, it's, not that, it's, it's not that complicated, but it's like I just kind of put it up there. I don't know. It seems complicated to me. <laughs> Is it? I think it's just kind of, if you, if you like detail painting, watercolor is much easier than oil painting because I do paint oil, but it's like the, the kind of painting crystal with the oil is a pain in the neck, but watercolor is just much better to do it. Kind of, that's how I see it. So anybody questions? 
I don't see it. Ed, you're welcome to unmute yourself if you have any questions. And yeah. Soon. Um, I see some at Lily Cack was one of your students and she learned so much from you. I'm seeing that come through the chat. Lots of thank yous. Okay. Oh, okay. I guess no questions. You were so, you explained everything so well. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Good night, so much. everybody. Hope to see you next month. Oh, Bye. you are our only. Enjoyed it. It was Just a keep wonderful going. lesson. Thank you. Thank you so much, Soon. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you for thank I would like to see the complete one. Will you post? You will post oh, on. Yeah. Right. I, I will do that after I finish. Yeah. I will put them in a yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you. I gotta work then. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot goof you off with this painting, huh? All right. <laughs> okay. I think I'm gonna end the call now. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye.